that he was dealing with probably for many years. So the Bible says that when he come, when Jesus came into the Lord's house on the Sabbath day, the people, the Pharisees, the religious people were looking at him to find out if he was going to heal that man that they may accuse him. Meaning, they did not want this man to get healed because protocol had to be observed. They did not want this man to be healed because religion is saying that on the Sabbath, it is not fitting to receive healing. But Jesus, on that day, healed the man. I say Jesus, on that day, healed the man. I have come to realize everybody does not have to agree for you to be blessed. <laughs> Thank you. They don't even need to like you for you to be blessed. When God gets ready to bless you, he is not going to consult with the hypocrites and the naysayers. You know, one of the biggest hindrances to the move of Jesus is religion. That we are so focused on observing religion that we lose sight of what the Lord wants to do. When God is ready to do it for you, he will not wait for men's opinion. The Bible says that Samuel went to the house of Jesse, the father of David, looking to anoint the next king. And the Bible says that David's father called the brothers of David. And when Samuel saw one of the brothers of David, he said, certainly this one must be the king. And God said, no, that's not the one. And all of the brothers of David, one after the other, seven of them, none of them was qualified. And Samuel asked, are these all your sons? And the father kind of wondered. And he said, ah, there is another one. And Samuel said, the one that you people did not call to come. Everybody is going to wait. Go get him. I say, when God is getting ready to bless you, he will not consult with man. When the time came for the anointing to come upon David, whether the father wanted it or not, it did not change anything. Whether the brothers wanted it or not, it did not change anything. No matter what men was thinking or debating or conniving or planning, that could not change the anointing that was reserved for David, the anointing that was to come to David, the blessing that was to come to David. I have come to announce to someone this morning that no matter what man can say, when God is ready to bless you, he will bless you. No matter what your circumstances can bring, when God is ready to bless you, he will bless you. No matter the family curse, no matter the family limitation, no matter your background, run, no matter your family name, when the Lord is ready to bless you, the Lord will bless you. He will bless you in the valley. He will bless you on the mountain. He will bless you on the day of the Tabbat. He will bless you on a regular day. He will bless you when it rains, when it snows, when it is sunny, when God is ready for you. He is ready. He said, I am God. And I will do what I please. <laughs> yes. I am God. And I will do what I please. When Jesus arrives. He sees this man. Who has a withered hand. He sees this man. Who has an affliction. And, and the religion is saying. It is not time. And Jesus said. Who has told you when is time. I am the personification of time. I decide when time is time. It is not in the hands of men. To decide when the time is the time. It is God. Who decides all things. And he said the time has arrived. He said that you have been afflicted 
long enough. You have had this condition long enough. You have suffered long enough. And now I am come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. I have come. Now is the time, saith the Lord. Oh, I want to encourage someone. I say, now is the time. It is not what the doctors have said. It is not what any man can say. God said, now is the time. Lift up your hand and say after me, oh Lord, my time of visitation is now. Amen. <laughs> my time of visitation is now. When Jesus arrived, he meets a man with a withered hand. Beloved, the, the withered hand tells me one or two things. It's that either the man got a disease that withered his hand. Or he got into an accident that withered his hand. In other words, he was not born like that. Can I say that again? I say when Jesus meets the man with the withered hand, the withered hand tells me one or two things. One, either he got a disease that withered his hand, or he got into an accident that withered his hand. In the beginning, he was not made as such. God did not make him like that. It is the circumstances of life that have led him to be that way. Somebody needs to hear me this morning and hear me well. You were not born that way. Yeah. Jesus wants you to know you were not born that way. You were not born with a withered hand. You were not born with a withered life. Because when Jesus looks at the man, he does not only see a withered hand. He sees a withered life. And he said, you were not born that way. You were not born with that depression. You were not born with that anger. You were not born to walk in discouragement and fear. You were not born to walk in loneliness and full of doubt. You were not born with a history of disappointments and failure. You were not born that way. You were not born that way. But life happened and it withered your expectation for a better day. And Jesus said, you were not born that way. And because you were not born that way, God who created, you, who created you perfect has come to restore you. I say God who created you perfect has come to restore you to your initial state. For the Bible says that sin came. Through one man, because you see, the deformations of life is a result of sin in the life of man. But the Bible says that sin came through one man, but redemption, deliverance, restoration came through another man. Sin came through one man, Adam, but restoration came to another man. And that other man, his name is Jesus. And that man is here this morning to bring about restoration in your life, to bring about healing to your life, to bring about deliverance to your life, to bring about hope into your life. That way, you were deformed and transformed by sin and the things of these lives that you might be restored. I don't know what is with it in your life this morning, but I have come with a word of the Lord for you. Today, your hour of restoration is here. I say your hour of healing is here. I say your hour of deliverance is here. Jesus is in the house to heal, 
and restore you whole. And Jesus looked at the man who had a withered hand. And Jesus said, stand forth. Verse 4. He called him in the middle. I like Jesus. You know, when God is going to bless you, he will not hide. He will make it public. <laughs> oh, yes. Didn't he say in Psalm 23, he said, I will put a table before you in the presence of your enemies. I say, Lord, why are you giving me a table now? All I need is a plate. I cannot eat everything on the table. God said, I want your enemies to see you. I want it to be public. Oh, I want them to know that your God is great, that your God is mighty, that your God is powerful, that your God is the God of abundance, that your God is the God of plenty. I declare a season of plenty. Lift up your hands. I declare a season of plenty. A season of plenty. A season of plenty. Receive it now in Jesus' name. In the present, public, I like God. And that is why sometimes I tell people, I say, what? I say, I say, where you fell is where God is going to lift you up. Sometimes, Things happen in church and people are so upset and they say, oh, as, as for me, I am leaving the church. I am leaving. I say, but I, my friend, let God bless you. Let God restore you because the things happen to you in the church. You have left the church. When God has restored you, who is going to see you? But God said, I want them to see it. Don't rob God of his boast. God wants to be able to see. You see my daughter here. You saw her then. You spoke about it. Some of you talk. Some of you did not believe it was going to happen. But today I have come that you may see her now. That what the Lord has done. The work that God has done. And God said, this man has been in the synagogue with a withered hand all of these years. Today I want all the church to know. I will bless him in the middle. That everybody will see that this man is blessed. I declare your elevation shall be public. Your restoration shall be public. Your blessing shall be in the open. He will not hide. He will not take you and hide you somewhere and then do it and then say, ah, eh, 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 it is done. And then you come and say, ah, the Lord has blessed me. No, this one was done in hiding. God said, I will not hide it. I want everybody to see it. You know, there are some blessings when God makes it. You cannot hide it. I declare, I prophesy over you that there is a blessing that is coming your way. You will not be able to hide it. Uh, that the people that saw you walking will see you in the new car. You cannot hide it. Uh, that the people that did not believe uh, you could get pregnant and give birth. Uh, they will see your belly. You cannot hide it. Uh, I said that there are some grace and blessing that the Lord shall release over your life. You cannot hide it. You cannot hide it. Put him in the middle. Say today, the whole church will see that you were not born that way. Today, the whole church will see that God who is faithful, God who is just, God who has seen your affliction on this day shall restore you. On this day shall restore you. On this day shall restore you. And he say, stand in the middle. Hallelujah. Stand in the middle. And he say, on the day of Sabbath, shall I kill or do evil? Verse 5. Let me show you this. And he said, and when he had looked around about them with anger, Jesus was so, was so grieved by the hardness of the hearts of the people. People are so religious. Ah, pastor, how someone like this can be in church. Hi, pastor, how someone like this can be in the leadership. Hi, pastor, don't you know who she is? Don't you know what she has done? Don't you know how they are? And the Bible says Jesus looked and he was anchoring. He was grieved that we don't see like God sees. We are more concerned by the opinion of men. 
and 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 just focus on our uh come on uh, prejugé that the things that we the struggle in our minds and in our heads about people i pray today that god will deliver us from these things that we may see like god sees that we may see like god sees thank you he said hey look being grieved for the hardness there, he said unto the man, say after me, he said unto the man, stretch forth thine hand. Repeat after me, he said unto the man, stretch forth thine hand. Okay, look at me now. Question. The man, Jacob, had a withered hand. The hand is dry. Jesus said, my friend, that dry hand that you cannot stretch all of this time, stretch it. He did not wait for the man to have a man. The hand was like that. And Jesus looked at him and he said, hey, my friend, stretch your hand. I'm like, Lord, how does he stretch the hand? He cannot. That's why the hand is called withered. It means you cannot. But Jesus said, you can. I want somebody to know this morning. What you say you cannot, you can. Yeah. What people have said you cannot is about to happen in your life. Oh, Jacob. What, Akayamaya, what yourself have said cannot happen is about to happen in your life. What your friends have said cannot happen is about to happen in your life. What your family has said cannot happen is about to happen in your life. He said, hey, my man, stretch it. Stretch it. It is not time, y'all, to say, Lord, how do I stretch it? Lord, don't you see my hand is with it? Lord, don't you see the doctor that say I cannot have children? Lord, don't you see that now I am 45? How am I going to get married? Lord, don't you see that I have three kids? Who is going to marry a woman with three kids? Lord, don't you see that I don't have no money? God said, I know what you don't have. I am saying, I will do it. I will make it happen. Strike off your hands. Start debating. Stop asking questions. Jesus said, I see that your hand is with it. But I say, stretch it. Stretch it. Hey, this morning, if you will stretch for it, you shall have it. Don't ask God, how is it going to happen? Don't ask God, who is going to do it? Just stretch for it. Just stretch for it. Stretch for it. Just stretch for it. Hallelujah. Hear the voice of Jesus speaking to you this morning. And just stretch for it. Just stretch for it. Hear the voice of Jesus telling you, take a step of faith. And just try for it. He had the voice of Jesus telling you, believe in me. And just stretch for it. He had the voice of Jesus saying to you that God, Ephesians 1 3, has blessed you with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. He has already done it. All you have to do is to lay hold of it. All you have to do is to lay hold of your healing. All you have to do is to lay hold of your miracle. All you have to do is to lay hold. Lord has done it already. You need to stretch for it. Because that man could have sat there, Pastor Kadi, and now begin to debate like the sick man at the pool of Bethesda. When Jesus says, do you want to be healed? He started doing arguments. Jesus said, I don't want arguments. I just say, do you want to be healed? Jesus said to this one, stretch for it. And he could have said, Lord, I cannot. Yes. Lord, I have never stretched that hand all this while. I can, it's not going to happen. But Jesus said, stretch it. Stretch it. I told you last week that Jesus said, it is the time. It is the time of answered prayers. And many of us are wondering, 
Pastor, do you know how long he has been with my situation? I don't care how long he has been. I say, God said, your season of answered prayer is here. Just lay hold of it. He said in Psalm 5, verse 12, he said that God has crowned you with favor. God has crowned you. He has crowned you. He's not going to do it now. He has already done it. The crown is yours. And now you are saying, ah, as for me, I am not princess material. I am not king material. God said, I am not asking whether you feel like king or princess material. I say, I have crowned you with favor. Just take the crown. Just take it. I am not asking your opinion on the matter. I said I have already done it. I have crowned you with favor. Just take the crown. Put it on. And start walking. As a prince. And a princess. Of the most high God. Stretch for it. It is yours. For the taking. This morning, let me wrap up. Stretch your faith. <laughs> it says in Luke 12, 32, it is your father's good pleasure to give you the keys of the kingdom. You can reach for it if you are willing to stretch for it. You can reach for the keys of the kingdom if you are willing to Stretch for it. Keys that will give you access to a new level of the anointing. Keys that will give you access to peace and your heart's desire. Keys that will give you access to a life of fulfillment, of prosperity, and of abundance. This morning, are you willing to stretch for it? If you are, then take it. All that the Lord has in store for you. It is yours, but it is yours for the taking. What would you do? I have come to tell you. Stretch for it. It is there. It is close. It is near you. Just stretch for it and grab it. This morning, I want someone who by faith will grab his healing. Someone who by faith will grab his breakthrough. Someone who by faith will grab his financial blessing. Someone who by faith will grab his marriage. Someone who by faith will grab his fruitfulness. Someone who by faith will lay hold, lay hold, will receive with action, with action. Stand on your feet right now. Receive, receive with action. He said in the book of Mark, chapter 11, verse 24, he said, whatsoever you ask by faith, believe that you receive it. Believe that you receive it. The word receive in the Greek is lambano. There is a song that is a, a, a labano, something like that. Labano means to receive. Labano means to take. But I like the word because the receiving is not a passive verb. It is saying it is receiving in action. Meaning there is something that you do to lay hold of that which God is giving you. That's what Labano means. Labano means you are laying hold. You, eh, 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 you, you, eh, you're not just waiting for the thing to reach you. No, you are receiving it in such a way that you are taking an active action towards that which you are receiving. That's what Lambano means. And that's what somebody is going to do this morning. Lift up your hands. Stretch for it up. And begin to declare it right now. You are downloading. Uh -huh. That's the word. That's the verb that I like. Download your healing. Download right now. Labano. Labano it. Labano it. Receive your healing. Download it even now. Receive your akayimaya. Your breakthrough. Download it even now. Receive your miracle. Begin to download akayamaya. It is available. But now you need to Lambano. You need to Lambano that blessing. You need to Lambano. 
abandon that grace. You need to abandon that favor. Praise him, praise him, help me out. You need to abandon Asamaya Koriaba Santaya, Yemaya Koriaba Kandaya. That miracle that the Lord has received for, has released in your life. You need to Akayamaya Koriaba to receive it now actively, passionately, faithfully. Declare it. I shall not be denied. In this season, I shall not be denied. Ah, I receive my faith. I lay hold. I download the grace. The anointing, the peace of God, the favor of God, the miracle of Jesus. I download that miracle in my life and in my situation. Even now, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I give you praise. Lord, I give you glory for you are faithful. Lord, I give you honor for there is none like you. Lord, I give you adoration for you alone are worthy. You alone are holy. Now I download it. Now I receive it. Now I lambano. I lambano even now. I lambano every grace, every akayamaya kuriaba, every deliverance, every healing, even now. In the name of Jesus. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty thanks. You do mighty thanks. You do glorious thanks. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty thanks. You do mighty thanks. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do, you do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do, you do mighty things. You do glorious thanks. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. Lord, you do mighty things. You do mighty things. Glorious you do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. Lift up your hands. That the Bible says that the expectation of the righteous shall not be disappointed. It shall not be cut off. As you by faith stretch Hakazimaya to receive the healing, the deliverance, the breakthrough, the miracle. Ha, let it manifest even now in your life and situation. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare this morning, you shall not go home empty-handed. You shall not go home empty-handed. You shall not go home empty-handed. By faith right now, declare that you have received. By faith, declare it. 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 He has done it. He has done it. Just take it. He has done it. Just believe it. He has done 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 it. Thank you, Lord. You know, answered prayer operates on the platform of faith. If you can believe for it, you will eat the fruits of it. Yeah. If you can believe for it, you will eat the fruits of it. Answered prayer operates on the platform of faith. All you need to do is to believe. And it is yours for the taking. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can you put your hands together for the Lord? Hallelujah.
we are about done, you can remain standing. Do we have any first time visitors this morning uh, beside the uh, Jacob and the family? If you are here for the first time, we are all old timers. So please don't forget, next week, uh, this coming Sunday, we only have one service, beginning at nine. Hallelujah. It's the climax of our prison worship conference. You don't want to miss it. Invite someone. Uh, um, um, Reverend Glady will be here with us all throughout the week. She will be here on Sunday. Amen. She will be our main speaker. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, let's lift up your hands for, your, for the benediction. Amen. Thank you all for coming out this morning. Amen. May the Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Do we have a visitor? The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon thee and be gracious unto you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon thee and give you peace. The Lord bless you. May the shalom of the Lord be with you now and forevermore. In Jesus' name and the people of God say amen. God bless you and see you this week at the conference.